Hey you guys, what's up? My name is Evie Clay and I'm an ophthalmology trainee. In this video today, I thought I would show you my ophthalmology portfolio because I found that looking through other people's portfolios whilst I was preparing my own gave me a really good idea of what to do um, to organize and present it properly. So this is my ophthalmology portfolio. I got it from Grandison Portfolios. I think I paid about 50 pounds for it at the time. Um, I did buy a cheaper one last year and it was 25 pounds, but the quality wasn't so good and I wasn't too happy with it. So I think this is quite a good standard. Um, you can definitely get portfolios that are way more expensive. I know there are some available for 200 pounds, but I'm not sure it's really worth it spending 200 pounds on a portfolio. Just to give you an idea of how much I scored for my portfolio, I think it was 73 out of 100. Um, so not too bad. Obviously there are people who score way higher than that, even in the 90s. Um, but I was pretty happy with 73 because the year before that, I think I only got 40. So it's a huge change. Um, let's jump right in. First up, this is my table of contents. You can see an orange post-it note here. I have put post-it notes throughout my portfolio just to cover any personal details because I don't need that all over the internet. Um, I used Canva to create my content page. Um, and there are 10 sections as you can see here and I've got a 10 section divider as well um, as per the Seven Deanery website. This divider I got from a website called Avery because, and I thought it was good because you can print out um, personalized tabs. Um, so it looks really neat as opposed to handwriting it, which just wouldn't look as good. In my year, they had cut it down from 10 to nine sections and I had already bought a 10 section divider. So I labeled the 10th bit as other. Um, I'm pretty sure you can actually get a nine section divider. The devil is in the detail and it's so important to make it look good. Don't use a 10 section divider if you're only going to have nine sections um, and then have a kind of a way an empty gap here. Um, anyway, I bought these high quality page folders off Amazon. I felt like the standard ones weren't good enough and they felt too flimsy. So these are archive standard. I believe they're thicker and they're clearer as well. I think it's worth spending a decent amount of time organizing and presenting your portfolio uh, because it gives you a maximum score of three points, which is so important and goes such a long way. Now I'm just going to flip through my portfolio and show you what's inside. The first section is a list of my previous posts. Um, I've also labeled each page as well because I just thought that that contributed to making it look more organized. But obviously you don't have to do that. And I put little sticky numbers on the bottom right hand corner as well. I wasn't actually in a clinical post the second time I applied and I thought I would just take the opportunity to explain what I did during my year, uh, for example, doing the FRCO part one, doing um, attending regional and national conferences, a taste of week in ophthalmology, just to beef it up a little bit. And then over here, I've got a little diagram showing all the rotations I did during my F1 and my F2 years. Um, I've also included my foundation program completion certificate, which they um, ask you to do as well. The next section is qualification. So under here, I've got my MBBS certificate and then my intercalated BSc certificate as well. There's really not much to say here. It's just the two certs I've added in. They are the original ones as well. Um, but I think you can put in a photocopy. Next section is prizes and awards. I added my MBBS certificate again. Um, because I had a distinction in medical sciences. I'm not really too sure whether that actually gives you points, but I included it anyway. Um, and then during my BSc, I also had a first class honors and I'm pretty sure that counts towards points and their prizes and awards. I won a first prize during my BSc year, so I added that in as well. Um, I'm not sure if this counted, but I got a merit from my foundation e-portfolio um, and I thought it looked good, so I added it in. Next section is specialty links and commitments. This is the part where you can really beef it up to show your commitment. Um, I included my part one ophthalmology exam results, um, which you can see here. I mean, all, all it says is pass and pass, that's it. Um, I included a sign letter from my consultants to confirm that I attended a minimum of 10 clinics. I've also included my microsurgical skills course certificate. Um, and this is my training report uh, for the eye simulator to show that I completed a minimum of four hours on it. And this is a sign that's to confirm that I had done a dissection project on the orbit during my BSc year. 
And these are just various attendance certificates um, for various ophthalmology related conferences. A lot of these conferences were held by the RSM, so it's a really good place to look for conferences and talks to attend. It's so another one by the RSM and another one. Oh, this was the annual student and training ophthalmic conference in 2018. Um, I really recommend that. That was a really, really good conference. Um, and you'll have the opportunity to present a poster as well. Uh, this one, I attended a international conference in Singapore. Uh, so I added that in. The next section then is the multi-source feedback. I printed off two MSFs from my foundation year. So in 2019 and 2018 in my a &E and infectious diseases rotations. Obviously only choose the ones where you got mainly positive feedback because you don't really wanna be showing off any negative feedback that you got. There are a few pages each, so I'll just show you the very last page. So this is the very last page of my MSF. I highlighted the main comments as the examiners probably wouldn't wanna read through the whole thing. So just positive things, you know, like happy to help, one of the best junior doctors I've worked with, hardworking, always accessible, all good things. Next up is publication. So for this bit, you have to print off a pro forma, which you can get on a Severin Deanery website. Then you also include a screenshot um, of your PubMed search to prove that your publications are actually on PubMed because they don't have the time during the interview to actually search it themselves. And I also included the first page of my published paper uh, for both papers as well. This is the pro forma, which I mentioned before that you can print off the Severin Deanery website. Um, I've got two publications, like I said, people with lots of publications can score really highly here because you multiply the impact factor of the journal, um, which you get of a list as well. It's a link that you click on to go look for the impact factor. Um, and then you get a score as well for your authorship. So if you're the main author, you get a higher authorship score. Um, here I got 15 points, uh, which is not too bad. Next up is the audit. So you're meant to include your best audit. I didn't do an audit related to ophthalmology, so I included one that I did during my orthopedic rotation. I included a signed cover letter from my consultant confirming that I did carry out the audit. I also included a certificate of completion, um, which again was just signed by my consultant. I typed out a summary of my role just explaining what I did for the audit. I included the slides as well. And also because I presented it at a competition for audits, um, I included that certificate as well. So I'll show you the certificate. So yeah, this is just a competition that I presented the audit at and it was good to include the certificate in here. Next up is the presentation section. It didn't need to be solely ophthalmology related, so you include anything that you want. Um, international presentations are worth more than national or regional presentations and oral presentations are worth more than a poster. Um, so I included the certificate of presentation as well as the printout of the poster that I had actually made. Um, so this is a, a case report that I wrote up and I presented it at a international conference and then I include the actual poster as well. Um, this is a paper that I presented at the ASTOC conference in 2018, and I included the actual poster as well. Uh, this I did back in medical school. It was a cardiothoracic surgery related thing. I included the poster too. And even though I had included this uh, certificate of merit in my previous section, I included it here again because I felt like it would um, add another point to this section. So definitely if you've got things that repeat throughout your portfolio, just add them in anyway, because your examiner is not gonna flip back to your previous section um, to award you a point for this current section that you're in. So just make it really, really clear um, about what points you want to be awarded. The next section is teaching. Another point to make here is that for your subcontent page, label it and word your titles in the same way as they do on their website, on the Severn Deanery website. So for example, design an educational course. This is word for word what they have on the website. And so I included that in as well. Again, just to make it really clear. So the things that I included here, I have a signed letter saying that I had designed and delivered a regional ophthalmology course. I did this with a group of friends and I would really recommend doing that because things like this are so much easier as a group. Um, I also did the Oxford Medical two-day teach to teacher course, which was actually really useful. Um, so I would recommend that as well. Um, other things I included in this section, I was, an, I was an author of a chapter in a textbook. I wrote a chapter on plastic surgery. Um, I had a former role in undergraduate teaching um, back in King's. I was a host for a year three taste today. 
And I also did a few e-learning modules for healthcare um, related to teaching, so I included them in as well. I'm not sure if they actually gave me any points, but I thought it'd be good to include it. The very last section which I added in on my own is called Other. I'm not sure if anyone else did that, but there used to be a section on extracurricular activities. I wanted to fill it out and have a nice even number, so 10 complete sections instead of just 9. Um, I included a letter here saying that I was involved in fundraising for a charity called Find in Business. Um, and I also did some volunteer work uh, for a children's orphanage called Cozy in Cambodia, which was really good fun. And that's it! All right, so that's my portfolio, you guys. I hope that was helpful. Drop me a comment below if you've got any questions and I'll see you next time.